when you're painting in the traditional watercolours and oils, there are many rules to obey. But once we start adding inks and pencils and pastels, we break all the rules and create interesting work. These are the, some of the materials we'll be using. The bottled ink with the pipette, the felt tip pen, the brush pen, a waterproof ink and a water soluble ink pen, a series of oil pastels, different makes, soft pastels and water soluble pencils. Well, let's get started and see what happens when we mix a few of the medias together. Here I've drawn three items in different inks. First of all, we have the waterproof ink and I'm going to put a little wash of watercolour over it and you can see that the ink doesn't run at all and this is the waterproof ink. The other ink we can mix with watercolours is the water soluble ink and this is a beautiful one which merges and runs together. You see it's lovely isn't it? It diffuses beautifully when you add a little bit of water and watercolour. The last one is the brush pen which again is waterproof but it's thick, it's bold and it's adventurous. So watercolour is an excellent partner with it. Another two medias that work very well are pastels and inks. And here we will be using two drawings of banana and this one is in water soluble ink which has been watered down and diffused and allowed to dry. And what I'm going to do is to put some soft pastels on this, which give beautiful colour, covering over the light area. And I can also add a little bit of water, which allows me a little bit of running of the paint. And then I can finish off with a little bit of light area. So it's, it works very well together. The next one is a waterproof ink with oil pastel and this is blocked in lovely apricot colour but the ink doesn't run at all and then put another colour on brighter colour and you can run over the line and be a little bit more free spirited about it and put the brown markings on to define the structure My favourite mixture of all is the watercolours with the pastels. Here I've prepared an onion with watercolours and allowed it to dry. And then I'm going to use a soft pastel on the surface to denote the markings. This is very easy to do and it's um, very good to show up the structure of the onion and then I can put light bits on here to emphasize the shape and a little bit of shading. This is the soft pastel with watercolor and then I'm going to do the resist the oil pastel with the watercolor and using the pastel either you can use it on top of the dried watercolor so it's light on dark or you can place the resist on your watercolour paper and then run watercolour over the top and these little marks will come out as the resist and texturing on the top. I'm using an alarizing crimson and some vermilion and even while that's wet you can press some more resist through the watercolour to give you a little bit more texturing. Isn't that great? Another really useful mixture is the pencils with the watercolour. And I use these um, for sketching or for my proper paintings I use this mixture of dry pencil. So I'm using a light pencil on a dried watercolour. And you can see it works quite well like that. You can shade it and then redraw. You can also use the dark pencil on a dried watercolour. Again, 
putting the veins in. Then you can use a watercolour wash, wet watercolour wash, and another leaf shape, and draw in the details with the water soluble or aquarel pencils. Now we press hard. Yeah, and a stalk and an outline. So some of it can merge and some of it can be quite pronounced. The two that I use the most of is the inks with the pencils. I find that these two are very useful, again, especially for sketching, and I like using the waterproof ink with the pencil. What I do is I water the tip and I wash over with the gentle watercolour wash from the pencil. I like this because I can use this as a wash and also as a drawing so that it acts as both. You can fill in a lot of the lines with a gentle texturing or you can fill them in with a very bold mark. So you've got the best of both worlds. The next one I also love because it's the water soluble ink watered down with water and allowed to dry. Then I get my pencils and again these light markings will denote the patterning on the shell. The pencils are excellent for this light glow that they give. So I've got a white and a yellow. And again you've got the best of, of both worlds because you could draw and you can paint with these. I can wash gently over the top and just blend those together again and then repaint or redraw into them these markings. So the ink stays there and acts as a darker base for my wet and dry pencils. We're going to try some additives now. Here I've drawn out a tree with inks and pencils and masking fluid and I'm going to draw another tree in the background and we're going to try some additives such as salt and masking fluid. Now the salt is gorgeous for snow, foam, clouds, etc. And the masking fluid I apply with a ruling drawing pen and the masking fluid is put on where I need the light or the white paper to be protected against my watercolour and then I rub that off when it's dried. I'm going to add a little bit of ink to this. So I'm highlighting a little bit of some of the structure, weaving some of the branches through each other, making some of it much stronger. And this is in water soluble ink, so it's going to run. Here we are. Now I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to add the watercolour. Well, it's, it's now dry and let's start with our watercolours. First of all, I want to wet the whole surface and this makes everything run but we need to prime the surface so that it's nice and damp for the salt. See the way that the ink is running into the background over the masking fluid. Little touch of yellow through the background. Then some cerulean blue. Wow, look at that. There we go. Some cobalt blue. So it's very colourful, snow can be. And a little bit of dark. So a bit of Payne's grey or Van Dyke brown. Anything that's quite dark, just a bit of contrast. 
and then we need to get some salt and sprinkle it over the surface quickly before it dries. If you put it on before it's dried, it's okay, but once it's even partly dried, it's a bit useless because it just won't work. Here we are, and now we have to wait until the whole thing's dried. Now it's totally dry, I can now rub off the salt. You've got to make sure the salt is thoroughly brushed off, otherwise it will go all damp in wet weather. It's a very sad painting. And then rub the masking fluid off. And this will give you the impression of branches with laden snow on them. Press very hard. Blow hard. There we go. Keep finding little bits left over. And then with your pen, just draw in a few remaining branches gently. That would make an ideal Christmas card, that would.